Ayo, it's another day. We are on day 37. Love agrees in prayer. If two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father. Matthew 18 verse 9. If someone told you that by changing one thing about your marriage, you could guarantee with near 100% assurance that your life together would significantly improve, you would at least want to know what it is. And for many godly couples, that one thing is the daily practice of praying together. To someone who tends to devalue spiritual matters, this sounds fairly ridiculous. And if told that shared prayer is a key ingredient in marital longevity and leads to a heightened sense of sexual intimacy, they would think you had really gone too far. But the unity that grows between a man and a woman who regularly pray together form an intense and powerful connection. Within the sanctuary of your marriage, praying together can work wonders on every level of your relationship. When you were joined together as husband and wife, God gave you a wedding gift, a permanent prayer partner for life. When you need wisdom on a certain decision, you and your prayer partner can seek God together for the answer. When you're struggling with your own fears and insecurities, your prayer partner can hold your hand and intercede on your behalf. When you and your spouse are not getting along and can't get past a particular argument or sticking point, you can call a timeout, drop your weapons, and go with your partner into emergency prayer. It should become your automatic reflex action when you don't know what else to do. I'm sorry, I just got like super emotional because that is a giant gift. It's a blessing. And if you have that blessing... I'm so happy for you. You need to take advantage of it. It's one of the things I miss is having someone I'm comfortable praying with. Someone who would be there with me and hold my hand and pray with me. So if you have it, value it. If you don't have it, but you have a spouse, try to build it. I would definitely 100% encourage that. It's hard to stay angry long with someone for whom you're praying. It's hard not to back down when you're hearing your mate humbly cry out to God and beg him for mercy in the midst of your heated crisis. In prayer, two people remember that God has made them one, and in the grip of his uniting presence, disharmony blends into beauty. Praying for your spouse leads your heart to care more deeply for them and about them. But more importantly, God is pleased when he sees you both humbling yourself and seeking his face together. His blessings fall on you when you agree in prayer. The word Jesus used when talking about agreeing in prayer was the idea of harmonic symphony. Two separate notes played at a time sound different. They're opposed to each other, but play them at the same time in agreement and they can create a pleasing sense of harmony. Together they give a fuller, more complete sound that neither of them can make on its own. Agreeing in prayer is like that, even in the midst of disagreeing. It pulls you both back towards your real center. It places you on common ground, face to face before the Father. It restores harmony in the midst of contention. The church, which is script which in scripture has a marriage connotation with Christ, can sometimes be a place where conflict rules. The disharmony that can flare up over various matters can derail the church from its mission and disrupt the free flow of worship and unity. At times godly church leaders will see this will see what is taking place, break off discussions, and call the people of God to prayer. Instead of continuing the discord and allowing more feelings to be hurt, they will seek unity by turning their hearts back to God and appealing to him for help. The th same thing happens in our homes when there is an intervention of prayer. Even at high points of disagreement, it stops the bleeding. It quiets the loud voices. It pauses you as you realize whose presence you're in. But... 
Prayer is for a lot more than breaking up fights. Prayer is a privilege to be enjoyed on a consistent daily basis. When you know what prayer time awaits you before going to bed, it will change the way you spend your evening. Even if your prayers together are typically short and to the point, this will become a standing appointment that you can orbit your day around, keeping God in the middle of everything. It's true that beginning a habit like this can initially feel awkward and uncomfortable. Anything this powerful will surprise you with its weight and responsibility when you actually try doing it. But bear in mind that God wants you to engage with him, invites you in fact, and he will grow you as you take it seriously and push past those times when you don't know what to say. You'll look back at this common thread that ran through everything from average Monday to major decisions and be so thankful that this one thing that changed everything. This is one area where it's imperative that you agree to agree. It talked about times when you don't know what to say. Tell him that. Say, Lord, I really don't know what to say right now. Holy Spirit, you know what I need to pray for. It says the Holy Spirit prays God's will for us when we don't know what to say. He prays for us. So ask him to, if you don't know, if your human spirit, if your mind doesn't know, ask the Holy Spirit's help. He's already doing it. Thank him for doing it. Pray the Lord's will be done. I really want this. I'm trying to figure out if I can incorporate it into my family and how to incorporate it into my family. Because... I know the power of prayer. I've experienced it my whole life. And the more people we can get involved in prayer, the more miracles. We just have to remember prayer should lead to action. Don't just be like, oh, I'll pray about it in the end. It needs to also lead to actions. The dare for today is ask your spouse if you can begin praying together. Talk about the best time to do this, whether it's in the morning, your lunch hour, or before bedtime. Use this time to commit your concerns, disagreements, and needs before the Lord. Don't forget to thank him for his provision and blessing. Even if your spouse refuses to do this, resolve to spend this daily time in prayer yourself. One of the questions is asked is, what can you do to help your mate be willing for the two of you to begin praying together? If you agree to pray together, what was it like? What did you learn from it? Sometimes before we ask, we have to think. Think before you speak. You know your spouse, theoretically, better than anyone else. And... So think about them. How do they respond? What kind of conversations do they like? What kind of words? What terminology? What references? What analogies? What parables? What makes them tick? What makes them say yes? What makes them agreeable? It sounds like manipulation. Maybe it is. But that's why we learn about each other. So we can encourage them to do the right thing. Praying together is the right thing. It says it in the Bible, so I am confident of that. Show me in the Bible where it says praying together is wrong. You'll blow my mind. And so talk to your spouse. But talk to them in a way that they will understand and they will receive. If you know your spouse isn't about blunt confrontation, then find a way to... What is the correct word? Diplomatically present your proposal. Ask them. Maybe, should it be this way? No, it shouldn't. But maybe it is. Maybe you need to give them something in order for them to give you this gift of time and prayer together. 
Maybe you need to offer something to them. That way they're willing to offer that to you. You know your spouse. The Lord knows your spouse. You know yourself. The Lord knows you. Use your knowledge and the wisdom and his guidance and pray to the Lord and ask him how to make this come into reality. Lord, how do I make this become a reality? How do I make a consistent prayer life with the ones I love become reality? And then do it. That's the hard part. Doing it. Acting it out. Sticking to it. And if you fail, oh well. Try again. Don't give up. Just say, oops. I'm sorry, Lord. Like, that was my bad. I didn't mean to forget today. You know, like. But. If you remember. Do it. Act. It will transform your relationship. Not only between you and the Lord, but with you and your spouse or your family. Prayer is so powerful. We need more prayer warriors. And for all my prayer warriors out there, thank you. The Lord thanks you for answering his call. The Lord thanks you for your diligence and your obedience. And I know I stumble and I fail and I forget. And I pray that the Lord helps me remember. And as I remember, I do what I'm supposed to do and I or I do my best. Lord, you reminded me, so even though I might not feel like it, I asked you to remind me, and you did, so I will obey. Even though it's hard, even though I don't want to, I do my best if I remember, if he reminds me, because I can't remember. My memory ain't worth nothing, but the Holy Spirit's memory is impeccable. And So when he reminds me of it, I'm like, oh, I totally forgot about that. Don't put it off until later. He reminded you for a reason. It will be radical. I love you guys. He loves you. I'm praying for you. We can't do this, but he can do this. So you can do this. Figure that one out. <laughs> love you guys. Have a great day.